Hi, Taruk. How are you? Come on. You little troublemaker. Hi. I gotta clean cages, so you gotta go over here, okay? Go on the perch. Go there. Thank you. All right. What's up? What it do? Richard, you back? Yes, sir. What up, Pepe? Still here too. You're still here. <laughs> Nothing new. Hell yeah. Got Richard back? Sup, bro? How was your trip? Dude, it was wild. Yeah? Uh, yeah, Washington right now has got a bunch of wildfires going on, so when I was out there, it was uh, super yeah. crazy, but... Fires. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Airport traveling sucks. Dude, look at the size. Dude, it's bigger than my hand. That's a monster, monster poop. Holy crap. Batman, what's up, bro? You just took a monster. All right, so first things first. We got to clean Batman's cage. So what I'm going to do, look at him, he's, he's like, what are you doing to me? Oh, come on, big boy. So all I want to do is I just want to pull his body out with that hook. See, just like that. Let's get this big boy out of here. Look at this freaking thing. Look how massive he is. Now he just ate a rabbit, probably like five days ago now, and he already took poop. Crazy how thick he still is. Oh my god. Dude, he easily weighs 20, 30 pounds. Easy, easy, easy. Alright, so let's get him up. Put him in the trash can. Just like that. Oh, nice and safe. Hey, Batman. See, she's not in the best mood today. Let's get you out like this. There we go. Just like that. Nice. Man, she's super warm today. She's pretty heavy too, man. She's a good, she's easy 20 pounds as well. It's a big freaking rattlesnake, dude. Such a beautiful snake. Look at that. It's alright. It's okay. Alright, let's get that safely closed. Let's get that meatball patty out of there. So, at the end of this week, got a little surprise for you guys. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but Dingo Dinkleman, our buddy over in South Africa, he's sending us a package, a little care package. He's got a few things in it for me, and he's got something in it for Chandler too, and I'm gonna let it remain a secret until then. But I'm really excited about these new snakes that are coming in from Dingo. And I'm sure Chandler is too. Alright, nice and clean. Look at that. Look how much better that looks. Alright, so now let's get Robin out here. She's rattling. She's like, Dad, why'd you put me in that freaking thing? Come here, sweetheart. Let's see here. Now I've been doing more research about these guys. I need to actually ask uh, Willie over at Venom Central. He's got some back wings too. Some bat wing crosses. I'm sure he'll know more about it. But, uh, so like I said in the previous video, my buddy Sloan was trying to breed them, but I don't even really know if they can breed because it's a natural hybrid. A lot of hybrid stuff, I think you can't really cross breed it or even breed them at all in general. So if anybody on here, if you guys have any knowledge about it, feel free to comment down below and tell me what you think. I don't know. I mean, apparently they lock up all the time. She's put out a bunch of slug eggs before. So if, if they don't get fertilized correctly, instead of having live birth with their, their live birth animals, um, they will still have slugs. They'll still produce, they'll still put out eggs. All right, Batman, let's get you out, big boy. Put you back in your cage with your girlfriend. Go on there. Where's her head at? 
Gotta make sure we safely get him in here. Dude, look how thick this freaking snake is. It's amazing. Scales of him, dude, are the size of my nails. It's pretty nuts. All right, dude, go back in there. There you guys go. All right, next up on our list is the Chinese Cobras. See where you're at? Oh, of course, you're not right there. So you're probably on the wood. Where the heck are you? Oh, there you are. Come here, crazy. This is the female Chinese. Hey, relax. Come here. Should have probably grabbed a smaller snake hook. That's okay. These guys, still pretty. Hey, sweetie. Uh, 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 uh. Let's get you in the trash can. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, little pearly. No, oh, you're not pearl. God. I'm so out of it. I can't remember anybody's names. Chinese Cobra! What a pretty snake, right? Very cool. Get in your cage. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now I'm gonna do your boyfriend. He pooped in his water, of course. Get you out. Come here, I'm gonna do this the dangerous way. I'm gonna grab that with my hand like that. I'm just gonna go get some fresh water. All right, some fresh agua for you. Okay, cool. All right, so now our black spares. Dude, this weekend actually a bunch of things are happening. I got that shipment coming in from Dingo. And I have Alex, uh, different Alex, not Pepe Alex. Uh, he's driving down here, I think from North or South Carolina. He's bringing me a couple snakes also. He's bringing me a boyfriend. I'm getting a male black and white spitter, Naja Siamensis, for these guys. So these are two females I have right here. So I'm finally getting a nice striped boyfriend. He's all white, has a stripe going from his head to his tail. And I have a male yellow eyelash viper coming as well. Super stoked about that. So I've been looking for another eyelash viper to pair up with this female for a while. Finally found one. He's bringing that down as well. And that's honestly, it's not like they need new cages. They're to pair things up. I'm getting to the point where next year I'm going to start breeding all the pairs that I have. Like the Gabinos. I want to I want to breed the Gaboon and the Rhino. I want to breed these black and whites. I really want to breed the eyelashes. Eventually, I want to breed these... Uh, Insularis. I told you I got the female for that too, right? Got a female Insularis coming. I got a bunch of cool stuff happening. I'm still looking for a female indigo snake. If anybody out there finds a female indigo, whatever. Get back to cleaning. Get you some water. I just need to fill up your water bowl. I'm just not even gonna take it out of there. Where's that water at? Thank you, Alex. Give you some water. Now, I know I have this cage open right now and I don't have glasses on, which is not very smart and no bueno, but the last 10, 12 times I've dealt with these snakes, they have not been spitting at all. So I've been a little bit more relaxed on the wearing glasses around them. I still will every now and then, but like this guy right now, he's hiding underneath the lip of the cage. So in order to take him out, I'm probably going to put some eye protection on here just because I don't want any funny business happening. So let's uh, let's go get some glasses on. This is the striped one. Hey, come here. You see how he's looking at me like that? What are you doing? Very curious. He didn't spit though. You see? I thought he was going to spit there for a second, but he did not. But look how beautiful this little snake is getting. Stripe all the way down its body. Black is super black. The white is super white. Dude, these things are getting huge. Huge. It's crazy. Beautiful, beautiful little snakes. So let's clean out this water bowl and get him back in this cage. Eat on him, so. All right. Put you back. Hey, there you go. Thank you. All right, so these guys, I'm just gonna spray them down. Their waters are pretty much fine. I actually wanna look at this eyelash viper really quick. 
and just make sure. I'm almost positive that this is a female. I haven't really like cared to look to in a long time. Look how fat this freaking snake is. Look at that, look at that big old belly. Yeah, so I'm almost 100%. Now you see the cloaca of this animal right here? See, cloaca's right here. See how small and skinny that tail is? That's a female. Males, where their cloaca is, they have a very long tail. Like a male's tail will probably be like that big. So this is indeed a female, which is perfect. So when Alex brings me that male, hopefully these guys lock up. Now you can see in the sunlight, you can see that. Dude, how freaking cool is that? Bright yellow. They have those little eyelashes right above their eyes. Such a cool snake, man. One of my favorites. I've raised this. I've raised this eyelash viper since it was a tiny, tiny little baby. A little tiny one. Let me see if I can hold you. Can I hold you? Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Look how cool that snake is. Very well mannered snake too. Let's put you. Let's put you in your bonsai tree. Hell yeah! Look how beautiful that shot is. Great color contrast. That bright yellow against those dark greens inside there. Beautiful snake, man. All right. Male blue insularis. Let's see here. Look how big this guy is getting. What a cool freaking snake, right? Look at that. Bright blue. It's great looking. He's almost, I feel like his color's gotten better since he's been here, no? Ever since I put him with that UV light. Ooh, see how fast he is? God, they're freaking smart. Look how fast he is. Holy crap. Fast snake, man. Let's get this guy sprayed down. Humidity on these guys is super high. I spray them once a day. Make sure all the plants get watered. Make sure he gets plenty of humidity. They like to drink. I know I have a water bowl in here. The main reason why I have a water bowl is obviously the heat in the cage. It's gonna evaporate the water, increase humidity. He doesn't really drink out of the water bowl very often. At, or if at all, he mostly drinks off the leaves. Now you can see as I'm spraying everything, all the water is being collected on all these leaves and that's how they drink. All right, so this cage, we got a little Eastern diamond back. He's got a bunch of little spicy meatballs everywhere and he's got no water and he's got some shed. He's a crazy little snake. Now you can see the difference between this pattern. See how, see how he's got distinct diamonds all along his back versus Batman and Robin that they have more of a dark pattern and they kind of have a different looking saddle. Even their head, you know, of Eastern Diamondbacks, they got that big wide head. Whereas Batman and Robin over here, they have more of a, uh, it's, I mean, it's a pretty thick head but it's still a little longer than an actual Eastern. Very similar pattern. Same, same, but different, you know what I mean? All right, the little apple snake, let's see here. He's not as bad as my albinos. It's crazy how normals, honestly, over the years of keeping snakes for years and years, I've always noticed, oh, of course, as I'm saying, <laughs> he's coming at me, man. as I'm saying that normals aren't as bad as albinos, he strikes at Richard, Jeez. but normally, oh my God, normally, normally I think that albinos are definitely worse, even with cobras. For some reason, the albinism makes them a little bit crazy. Maybe it's because they can't see as well or something. I'm not too sure, but that's that. Next up on the list is my little Central American boa. I always say Central American boa. Such a... No, definitely not a boa. Central American rattlesnake. Really cool snake. This one's from Mark McCarthy. Beautiful coloration. It's very light. It's got that stripe going all the way down its body. These guys actually get pretty big too. Not as big as Easterns, but still a very, very big girthy snake when they're adults. It's 
So this guy's a little squirrelier than the other ones. That's why these tongs work out perfect. They're not squeezing the snake at all. It's very, very loose grip. This rattlesnake is just very hard to hook, which is why I'm using these Midwest grabbers like this. So I can easily put him in the cage a little bit more safer than using a hook since he won't let me pick him up. But even, even clamping down on this is very, very loose. It's not, it's not hurting the snake at all, which is why these Midwest tongs do the trick. Great tool. All right, so this Cobra, not only do we have to clean his cage, but he just shed, he's a big cobra, but he's, his eye caps stay on his eyes every freaking time. Now, for those of you that don't know what eye caps are, when a snake sheds its skin, they also have a layer of skin over their eyes, they shed that as well. Sometimes they don't shed it and it becomes an eye cap, it's just a little clear cap over their eyes. So let's see if he's gonna let me pin him just like that. Alex, grab the back of his tail. See now what I'm gonna do, now you see how he's got this stuck shed right here? See he's got this piece on his eye. Ooh, relax dude, now you can see. So there's one, and now he, oh my God, would you relax? Stop, 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 okay. See, now he can see. Now he's gonna be extra mad. Alex, let go. Ready, and woo, there we go. Hey, now you can see, still wants to kill me. He's a very cool snake. Dude, he's nice and thick old body. Pretty big monocle, look at that. He's at least, what, four and a half, five feet long. Good size snake. I've had this guy since he was a tiny, tiny little baby. He's a caramel monocle, which means he kinda has that like brown and yellowish hue to him. Pretty cool snake. So let's get him in the trash can, clean his cage, put him back. Clean out this indigo's cage real quick. It's really not that dirty. Hey there, Bo. Such a pretty snake, man. Can't wait to get a female. I'm not even trying to, uh, to trying to breed him for money or anything. I, or honestly, I want to get into, uh, I want to get into the conservation aspect of it. And uh, there's a bunch of breeding projects that they do down here in South Florida that they breed them in captivity and they release them into the wild, which is really cool. And then they go and observe them and they keep track of all of them, find out where they're moving and where they're living, you know what I mean? It's really cool. So eventually, that's the goal with him. Instead of breeding him for, for uh, pet purposes and for animal trade, um, I want to breed him for conservation and just like, release all his babies into the wild. I think that'd be a really cool thing to do. Put you back, bro. I've had this snake for so long. I think I've had this snake for probably like eight or nine years now. Big boy. It's very cool. A lot of my first pictures of doing face-offs with Cobras is with that guy. Especially in like my older house in my old apartment. He's been with me for a while. Very cool. All right, Penny is next. Her cage is dirty. You got poop in your water, Penny. She's doing good. She's um, she's eating, so that's cool. But she still does that weird stargazing thing, which has me a little bit worried. But other than that, she's doing totally fine. Still super pretty little snake. She's not that bad temperament-wise. You know, pretty sweet. Copperheads are beautiful, especially when they have those bands like that. There's a bunch of different kinds of colors, and like I've seen ones that are almost purple. She's more peachy. Very pretty snake. Super cool little head. Yeah, beautiful little snakes. Put you back in their cage. Now that it's nice and clean, misted it down for her. They like the humidity on the higher side. She's got fresh water. All she needs. Awesome. All right, so now I think the only cage left to do, there's a little bit of shed in this cage, and then I gotta clean out this Egyptian down here on the bottom. So let's get this Egyptian Cobra out, see how he's acting today. This poor guy. 
His eyesight is getting worse and worse. But let's see how he is today. Is that an eye cap on him that I see? Oh yeah, that is an eye cap on him. I think he's actually going through some shed. Yeah, see that? See how he's got this opaque color to him? And his skin, look, it's peeling off right here. He's actually about to shit. That's why his eye caps look like that. You see how I'm literally starting to peel off some of his skin right here? It's because he's ready to shit any day now. Yeah, he's gonna shed probably today. Skin's coming right off of him. Let's get him in his cage. I sprayed it down for him so it's nice and moist, easier to get that skin off. He'll rub it all off there today. Awesome. His heat pad is on. Boom. All right, so everything is clean now. The last thing that we need to do is medicate Kilo. What we've been medicating him with is Batril. Let's see here, we need to give him 0 0.05. So right there is where we need to have it. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Good to go. All right, let's get him out of here. Kilo, hey bro. I know, I know, I know, hi. Hi, I know, come here, look over here. Look over here, I know, I know, I know. Come here, bro. Hi, how are you? Now, every time I medicate him, I'm keeping an eye. Betrol is a very strong antibiotic. And you want to make sure that you're not hurting your animals or blowing any holes in them because it, it can damage the skin of your snake. But so far, you can tell, I, I, I give him a shot in the third, the first third of his body every single time. I, I go on different sides each time, but you can tell he looks totally fine. You cannot tell at all where he's been having these previous shots. So he is doing very well. And hopefully he's becoming more receptive to this medication. So let's just take him like this, make him crawl in the tube, boop, 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 just like that. Alex, hold that part of his body just like that. All right. So now, first third of his body, right here. So on Sunday, I gave him a shot on the left side of his body. So today, I'm going to go right here on the right side. So. We go right in between, you wanna find that, that muscle right along his spine, which is right here, okay? That little muscular part. We're gonna go in. Oops, sorry bud. Come on. We just gotta hold him still. We're gonna go in right here. In. Oh, I know bro, I'm sorry. Just like that, right in the meat, okay? Give him his little shot, boom. And out. Now we give him a nice little massage like that. So it stays inside of him. Get him out of this tube. Come on, bro. Come here, come here. You're right. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. There you go. Just like that. He's a trooper. You're such a good snake, bro. I'm sorry I have to do that to you. But it's for your it's for your better well-being, alright? Get your hide box back in your cage. Put you in there. You can go take a nap, bro. I know it's rough. Now see every time I give him an injection, see, you can see that pink spot. It gets a little bit pink after every injection, which made us worried at first. But uh, after monitoring him throughout the day, after a few hours, the redness goes away and he's totally fine. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little cleaning video. Later guys, peace out.